Welcome back class. We're in Newton's Laws of Motion and we're going to be looking at linear motion today. So motion in one direction. So we are going to have to understand what motion is, a change in position. We're then going to look at speed, which is a, which is a change in displacement, where you are and where you ended up and how fast, how much time elapses during that. We'll then look further look later at acceleration, which is a change in your speed or a change in your velocity. So um, I think you're going to like this. I don't think that it's too hard, and I ask that you uh, just have patience with yourself while you're learning. So we're going to start with the idea that motion is relative. I want you to imagine a person bouncing a basketball up and down. As he's watching or she's watching this basketball, it travels away from their hand, hits the floor, and then returns to their hand, back and forth. A person directly above that ball might not even think that it's moving. It's moving away and coming back and moving away and coming back, but the ball is definitely bouncing up and down. If there's a person uh, watching the basketball, then the ball will go down, hit the floor, and come back up. If you were imagining further that this, man, this uh, person was bouncing a basketball on the back of a truck and the truck was going down the street, so let's say the girls basketball team has just won the championship and the truck in the float is going down the street and all the girls are bouncing their, their basketballs. What's happening is the girl on the truck still sees the ball in motion exactly the same as on the ground. There isn't a difference. The ball goes away from her hand, hits the ground, and comes back up. But if you were to be watching from the side this time on the truck, you could see that the ball would go down and up, just like on the ground. But if you had a different observer on the street that was watching the truck move, not only does the ball go up and down, but the ball goes up and down in a forward direction. So speed is a motion is relative to the observer that is possibly also in motion. So if you were to flip a coin and you're on a bus, will the coin go into the seat behind you or will it drop back down into your hand? So if your hand is moving and the coin is moving, then you might think that it's only a, a linear motion, but it might be more three-dimensional. Now, if we understand the distance covered as something is mo in motion, it's moving, it's going to change position. It starts off here and ends up here. So we're going to look at the idea of position as being where it is, and displacement kind of the idea of distance, the displacement is how far is where it ended up from where it started. So I could imagine going one block over on, my, on the floor in my room, but I could go all the way down the hall and around and around the building and come back in and then move over to one block. I covered a lot of distance, but my displacement is only how far did I start and how far did I end. So the displacement is just that, that final position minus my initial position. The speed is defined as that distance, but not really the distance going all the way around the building, but the distance that I traveled from, from where I started to where I ended, that displacement, divided by the time it takes to displace. Okay, so if I have a displacement of, if I just step over, I could take, do one block in a second. But if I actually um, traveled all the way around the building, I could, probably couldn't do it in a second. It, I might be one block over in a minute or an hour, depending on how far my actual distance of traveling was. But the displacement is just that step over. So speed is defined as distance divided by time. So here's an example. A girl runs four meters in two seconds. So the distance is four meters, her time is two seconds, so four meters divided by two seconds is four divided by two, which is two, and then your answer has to be in that, um, that speed or velocity, uh, which is meters over seconds. 
Now sometimes you want to t talk about the entire time that it took to go, right? So how fast did I move from where I started to where I finished? Um, it could be the average time. So the total distance covered divided by the total in, um, uh, interval. So if I did go around the building, I would take a lot longer speed than if I simply stepped over one block. So the total distance covered, no matter where I went, is really only one, le one block over. The time interval could change depending on how long it takes me to do that. And then my average speed is going to be that total distance divided by my time interval. Here's an example. You drive 200 kilometers in two hours and your average speed is 100 kilometers per hour. Now you can see that since you have an odometer, you have a speedometer on your car, you know that you could go 100 kilometers an hour, which is about 60 miles an hour. You can go 20, you can be stopped. Uh, you could be stopped at a red light. You could go faster than that. You probably shouldn't. And then, then as you take the entire amount of time divided by the total time, sorry, total amount of distance divided by total time, you have your average speed. You know from watching your speedometer that you, you could go faster than the average speed it takes, but you could also go slower. So your instantaneous speed is your speed at any instant. Okay, so you could speed up or slow down, but then if you were to take the entire distance you traveled divided by the top total time that you traveled, that would be your average speed. Your instantaneous speed is at any moment on that trip, what is your speed? We get in now to a different concept and that's velocity. We know that speed is distance or displacement divided by time. Velocity adds one more element. You have to know what direction you're traveling. So velocity has a direction embedded in it. So a speed could be I'm going 50 miles an hour. A velocity could be I'm going 50 miles an hour east. So I know where I started and when I ended. I have a distance divided by time, that's speed. I can find the magnitude of the speed simply by dividing. My velocity then has to, in, to uh, incorporate into what direction am I going. So for instance, if I just told you, I went 50 miles an hour for one hour, where am I on the map? Well, you would know because you would know that I'm 50 miles away, but you don't know where I am. But if I said my velocity was 50 miles per hour east, where am I? You could locate me on a map. You could say I'm here, and now I'm here, and this is how fast I went. So it's a vector. A vector has magnitude and direction. We have to have the idea of constant. A constant speed is staying the same speed. It doesn't slow down, it doesn't get, ba uh, get faster. Um, but your velocity, remember, has two parts. It's not just your speed, it's also your direction. So for instance, your velocity would change if you, got, if you went higher or lower speed, but if your direction changes, you're also not constant. So a constant means your velocity is the same speed and the same direction with no uh, acceleration, no deviation, in, no curving, no turning. In some ways, we're gonna see later that velocity, if you turn the wheel of your, of your car, you are actually, you have an acceleration. It feels like it, that you're accelerating even if you're going the same speed.